Well, yesterday's episode was eventful, I think is the best way to explain it. I want to say thank you so much to the vast majority of people saying they completely understand my position on the save. If you haven't seen the last episode, please do check it out. Basically, I got fired um, and I still do not believe it was fair. And that is why, of course, I decided to just rebuild with the latest patches in the game. So the same thing can't happen again, although I am actually in season three now and I'm, I'm going to show you the objectives. Um, basically, in season two, they gave me the most ridiculous, unfair, stupid objectives to get to the final of the Champions League and to win the, the Premier League. I mean, it was just impossible with my squad. So, um, yeah, I got sacked. We've rebuilt it. And honestly, guys, look, I'm going to jump into my squad here. You won't even be able to tell. Can, can you tell this is a technically a brand new career mode? I mean, a few of the ratings are obviously going to be a little bit different. And I've got Patino now. Cannot wait to use him. Uh, but players like Palmer, I think he was 69 rated when I signed him. Unfortunately, he was he, he'd barely grown at all at City. So he's only 65. Uh, a few other examples. Erdegaard's done really well this time around. He's gone up to 89. I've left him as a centre midfielder because I didn't want him to grow any more. It would, it would have been too much. But then there's some players that haven't grown as much. Saka, for example, I believe is 80... Or was, I should say, 87 in Season 2. He's now 85. Uh, I believe Nketiah hasn't done as well either. So it's kind of a mixed bag. But in general, you just can't tell. It's... um. It's pretty incredible. This, this is the craziest thing, okay? So if you think back to the last episode, I'd beaten Leeds and then I, got, then I got sacked. Just before that Leeds game, we were looking at the table. Aston Villa were in the top four. Now, I said yesterday I played career mode all day, trying to fix it and replicate things as well as I could. You have no idea how difficult it was to try and get the same kind of table. And you would not believe it, right? After three attempts of doing the entire season, this is why it took me hours and hours and hours... I managed to get Aston Villa to actually finish in the top four and we finished in third. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you the highlights of some of those remaining games. I haven't got the footage of all of them, but three of the big ones. I've got Chelsea, United and City. So I'll show you those highlights. I finished in third. Liverpool won the title, I think. Uh, Manchester United were, I think, winners of the Europa League. Um, Man City were in there. Basically... It's exactly as it would have been. How crazy is that? The Champions League this season has the exact teams that would have been in there had I finished season two properly. So honestly, I, I'm not just saying this to try and make it seem cooler. I'm being upfront with you guys. I, I made sure to do it as accurately as possible. I've got the same signings. I've sold the same players. I've got the exact same squad. And the teams in the Champions League are exactly the same from England. So how amazing is that? Anyway, Enough talking before we get into season three, and I'm also going to going to explain how I'm going to not punish myself, but because I've technically restarted and some people are calling it cheating, I'm going to limit myself this season. But let's jump into the highlights of those three big games towards the end of the season again. I can confirm I finished in third place, which is, I think, what I would have got anyway. Let's cut to those highlights now. So it was nine games remaining. We just beaten Leeds 3-0. And now we're going into the game at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. And we didn't get off to a very good start, to be honest. Lukaku is an absolute beast, not just in the air, but just in general. And you're going to see he tears me apart in this first half. But I was really trying, guys. This was the first time I played FIFA 22 with just no commentary. I, I didn't have to think about what I was saying. I was just playing the game and I certainly lost this first half pretty badly and uh, Chelsea deserved to be 2-0 up but in the second half I did improve I managed to get a goal back with Pepe look at this run just so much quicker than I think that's Reese James and I decided just to hit it near post but unfortunately it was the only goal we could get so we did lose this game 2-1 but the win against Leeds you know that gave us the three points didn't it and Chelsea we could kind of afford to lose and still finish high up in the table. Uh, then we had Leicester, which we got a one-all draw. And then we went into Manchester United at Old Trafford. Really, really wants to get a win here. They were actually below us in the table at this point. I'll show you at the end of all these highlights what the, uh, the games looked like and the table looked like and stuff like that. 
Again, though, not a good start early in the game here against Man United. I don't know how that is going in. Great shot from Sancho. They could have made it 2-0 in the second half here, but we got the ball back in our box and I decided just to go for it. Play it forward, get Martinelli in behind. Up against Maguire, you're just not going to catch him, are you? And that was another one all draw. So then we had Man City the very next game. As I said, Leicester we played, got a one all draw. I don't have highlights of that one. I've only got these three games. Uh, Man City at home. This was always going to be a tricky one. This is the one I was worried most about. I got it wrong earlier in this episode. I think I said that Liverpool were top of the table, but actually, no, it's Man City. We get a 1-0 head start and then Man City equalised with pretty much the last kick of the first half. That was very unlucky. And then they do actually take the lead uh, 68 minutes in and it's a pretty nice goal from De Bruyne. Absolutely ridiculous player. I can't complain about that. Flies into the top corner. 2-1 down. I'm thinking, great, we're going to lose this one. However, I was focused. I really, really wanted to get at least another draw here and then, um, you know, get some decent points against the best teams in the league. And look at this from Saka. One of the best goals we've scored. I honestly was shouting. I couldn't believe that went in. Uh, after a long day of playing FIFA, it was nice to just get a result that I could show you. You know, I wasn't going to show you the full season. So I was hoping that I'd actually go on to win this in the final few moments. And guess what? Neves does score with a rebound. It was Pepe and Nketiah, I think, in the box. They both came on as subs. It fell to Neves and he got the winner, which was absolutely beautiful. So what we're going to do now is go through the results. Uh, they're not the official images in game. So I've overlaid... Uh, the score lines that I got. So 2-0 Brentford, that was obviously um, the the game that wasn't shown before Chelsea. 2-1 loss, 1-all draw, 1-all draw, and then a 3-2 win. So not too bad. Leeds was just before the Brentford game that you saw in the last episode. And then we went into the final month. We had a draw against West Ham, a win against Watford, a draw against Wolves, and a 1-0 win against Aston Villa. So it wasn't too bad towards the end of the season. We didn't really lose too many games. We lost to Chelsea, obviously, but otherwise we were unbeaten. Not too bad at all. And that was the final table. Sorry, I couldn't get actual gameplay of it. I, I just I was in such a rush yesterday to get things done for the episode. So I've gone back and got just a screenshot here. Man City won the league. Liverpool came in second. We came in third. Villa came in fourth and United came in fifth. And the crazy thing is, guys, all five teams are in the Champions League next season. I don't know what it is, guys, but since I've reloaded and got the new patches, everything feels a lot more polished. The gameplay itself wasn't too different. Um, you know, I was still conceding those crazy top corner shots, but I do feel like the lineups are fixed. I'm not seeing players that shouldn't be at centre-back playing at centre-back, like Lamptey, for example, at Brighton. So... Honestly, there's some big positives from doing this. And I think in the future, I think I've learned a lesson here. There was one of the uh, top rated comments in that even though it's very tempting when the new game comes out, if I have early access to just start the Arsenal save right away, maybe it is worth waiting to get a, a much more polished version of the game. It's just very tricky for me to not want to just get straight into things. It's like, I've just got the game. I want to play it. I want to upload videos. And obviously it does really well on my channel. So... I don't know. I will definitely look into that in the future. Basically, though, what, what we all need is EA to release a properly finished product, a, a working game when it comes out. Not ugh, stupid early builds that just don't work. But anyway, guys, that is it now. I'm not mentioning it. It's season three in the Arsenal career mode. You can just imagine that I almost got sacked and the board have given me one more chance. We're going into season three with very similar objectives. Now, the, the, the beauty is, guys, okay, so although the objectives are tough, for example, I've got to win the league, I've got to reach the FA Cup final, I've got to reach the Champions League final, these are very difficult objectives, but guess what? I can now achieve the brand exposure critical priority objectives because these will work now. I got quite lucky with this one, get 10 wins at home, that really should not be a problem. And that's a critical one. Ticked off. Sign three players from North America. I don't know if this is a fixed one. I'm going to absolutely try my best this time to, to make sure it's done. Because if I get these critical priorities done, um, 
and maybe the financial one, maybe I, I should be able to do that, then I think I can get away with a second place finish in the Premier League, which I think is possible, or a semi-final in the Champions League. So I'm feeling a lot better about myself. For some reason, I'm not going to be able to do the youth development short-term objective. I, I, I guess I'm just not allowed to do that. It's, it's done. Uh, but I do still have the long-term one, but uh, it's not going to happen. So luckily, that's just a medium priority. We should be able to achieve everything else. I'm so happy about that. But how am I going to limit myself? Well, it's very simple, guys. I could very easily, with 300 million, completely blow my budget out the water and sign incredible players. But as a punishment for doing what I did and, and having to reload the save because of the, the broken objectives and getting sacked, I'm going to limit myself to two big signings. Two signings. That is it. Of course, I'm not going to spend 300 million. I'm probably not even going to spend 200 million. Maybe not even 150 million. I don't know yet, but I'm going to limit myself to two big signings. That is it. Two big players. I will try and get the three North American players signed just because that objective will need to be done, but they won't be players that I intend on using unless I can find someone incredible. Of course, I'm going to try my best to keep things as realistic as I have been with signings and not buying Mbappe and Ronaldo and things like that. It's going to be still a realistic save as much as I can, of course, in three years' time in real life, who knows who Arsenal will sign. So, of course, it, it gets harder and harder as the career mode goes on. But uh, I think what we're going to do now is... Oh, and by the way, I had to redo all the training drills. That took me ages. There's so many of them. That's all done. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have a pre-season tournament. So I guess what I need to do now is just take a look at the squad, see where I can improve, and then identify some targets. Now... One of the, uh, the the recurring comments has been that maybe Ramsdale just isn't good enough. And, and whilst I think he will be Arsenal's number one goalkeeper for many, many, many seasons to come, in FIFA terms, it probably is letting me down. You know, those top corner goals, whilst most of them are still going to go flying in, maybe I should be looking at bringing in a better keeper. Um, it kind of sucks, though, because if it was down to me and the gameplay was fine and balanced, which it just isn't at the moment, I'd keep Ramsdale. But he's not even 80 rated. So getting to the Champions League final with an 80 rated goalkeeper is hard enough, let alone a 79 rated keeper. I might need to invest one of those big signings, one of my two, into a goalkeeper. I'm thinking we could bring back Martinez. We could look at getting Chesney back in or we can look at someone else. I don't really intend on using Neto. Uh, and of course, we don't have uh, Leno anymore. We've got a Conquo, but 65 rated. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, Salisu's 80, Chambers 78, Yuga Chukwo is 68, Patino 68, Aziz is 68. How funny is that? Xhaka's 80, Palmer 65, Nelson 77. You can see I've matched all of their new positions as well. I've trained them exactly how I did it before. I went through all of my videos. Oh, I never want to do that again. Uh, Balogun is 70, Delap is 70, and then we've got Anketia, Pepe, Smith, Throw, Saliba, Maitland, Niles, Tavares, Sambi, and then the first 11. So Tomiyasu, 82 rated. I don't plan on changing up my right back. I don't really want to change anything else other than the goalkeeper. So maybe it'll be a case of bringing in someone on the bench. I am thinking maybe another central midfielder. Um, Tavares is taking up a spot on the bench here, which maybe I could free up and bring in like a defensive midfielder if Partey gets injured, Neves, whatever. So we'll look into it. But first, I think we should take a look at the goalkeeping department. Donnarumma is 92 rated. Oh my God. One of the world's best, I'm guessing. Yeah, look at that. Unbelievable. He'd cost me at least 150, maybe more. That's crazy, isn't it? There's LaFont. I mean, nah, it's kind of generic, isn't it? I've already added a few to the shortlist. I'm just kind of going through different leagues and having a look. Navas, I mean, mm, not feeling that either, really. To be fair, I think I've found, I think, at least four that I'm quite happy with. Let me go ahead and show you them now. So we've got Martinez, of course, ex-Arsenal. Could he be returning home? 85 rated. He'd be an absolute beast. We've then got Chesney, 87 rated. 
ex-Arsenal, ex-smoker. Um, a lot of people might not know this. Chesney, when he was at Arsenal, was seen as this future prospect, but had a lot of issues with consistency. He was very immature at the time, and he was actually caught smoking. I think it was with Jack Wilshere on the club training grounds. Um, and from then on, it just seemed to went go. It went massively downhill. Obviously, smoking is a very common thing, but when you're a professional athlete. No, man, the, the least you do is do it away from the training ground so no one sees, okay? He got caught. Uh, Jack Wilshere got in big trouble for it. But of course, um, he was seen as the best central midfielder that Arsenal ever had through their academy. And there was no way we were going to let him go. Whereas Chesney was seen as expendable. He went on to play for Roma, I think it was, and then Juventus. And he's turned into an absolute beast. So we could potentially bring him back home. I've added Nick Pope. But I'm not too sure how realistic that would be. But again, does it matter at this point with a goalkeeper? I mean, after three seasons, who knows what Arsenal would be doing? I've also added Ariola. He seems to be on a, a trip around the world playing for every club that he can. He's at West Ham, I believe now, isn't he? And he's been at Fulham. He's obviously been at PSG. He's done so many different clubs. So, yeah, I need to kind of narrow this down and decide. I think the best thing you can do in this situation is round it down. So I think Ariola, I'm going to pass on at this point, And that narrows it down to Martinez, Chesney and Pope. I think I'm going to take Pope out because great goalkeeper, but 83 rated. He's not even that high rated. So I feel like my best options, if I remove him, are Martinez and Chesney. Now, both of them have 12 months remaining on their current contracts. So we can pick them up pretty cheap. Let's have a look at their stats. So for me, it's all about, especially with the current meta of the CPU shooting in the top corner, it's all about the reflexes and the positioning, along with diving. Handling and kicking, not too worried about. So let's go reflexes and positioning, 88, 87. And then we've got 85, 83. And then diving, we've got 85. And then we've got... 86. So Chesney is the better goalkeeper. It's it's pretty clear. Why isn't there a compare tool? How how is that not a thing in career mode? How can I not compare one player with the other? So we're looking at 31 million for Martinez and 22 million for Chesney. Wow, that changes things massively. The other thing I've got to think about as well, taking Martinez would weaken Aston Villa who, again, finished in the top four. Good side. They're clearly very good at the moment. So it would actually help us in the Premier League. Chesney, you know, signing him wouldn't help us in the league, for example, by weakening a rival. But he's the better goalkeeper. I'm really conflicted here. OK, what are the traits? So we've got comes for crosses, team player, long throw. And then we've got comes for crosses, to be fair, I do use the long throw quite a lot. He's a bit younger. You could expect Martinez to maybe go up to 86, whereas I think Chesney will come down to 86. So if we're here for another season or two, who knows, I might be doing a season four. At this rate, it's quite likely. I don't think I'm going to win the Champions League this season. Um, I, I've got a, a stronger feeling about Martinez. So I think my decision is made. It's going to cost me a little bit more money but he's younger. We'll probably end up being the same rating as Chesney. I'm just going to go for it. I know some people would rather Chesney and that's absolutely fine, but I'm going to go with, with Martinez. We're bringing him home. It might not be the most realistic signing ever, guys, but I, I think it's it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and swap Neto, I guess. Neto is 83 rated. I just remembered. So he's not far off, but Neto isn't as exciting, is he? It's, he was just a backup for us. So we will try and do a swap here. Neto for Martinez plus 20 million. They're getting roughly 30 million value here. And they're willing to talk, but they want 21.5 million. Okay, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to negotiate. And that is one of two big signings done. Let's just go ahead and get his contract finished and over the line. I mean, I don't hate Martinez. I really don't. I loved him as an Arsenal player. I, I actually liked him when he was first on the block and I, I, I could see he'd be a great player, but he constantly went out on loan and a lot of fans, including myself, just thought he's never going to really make it, is he? 
And then, of course, he got his moment last season, the, the season before last, and he was amazing. And I, I guess the club just decided to stick with Leno. Not the greatest decision in the grand scheme of things, but uh, I don't really like how Martinez has gone on to do constant interviews about his time at Arsenal and how he wasn't appreciated and all that stuff. It's just like, dude, go and play for Villa and just shut up, <laughs> you know? Um, let's go ahead and do crucial first-team player because that's what he's going to be. I'm gutted for Ramsdale, guys, but I, I think I've got to do this if I'm going to improve. We'll go with a three-year deal. Shouldn't be a problem. I don't think he would have accepted five. Maybe he would have taken four. Reese Claus, we don't need one of those, mate. Come on, Emmy. Let's do this. We're going to counter. I'm actually going to put him on a higher wage here because I'm feeling generous and I will reduce the sign-on bonus and remove the appearances. So 80 grand, which is a lot cheaper than I was expecting. I think Chesney would have been on 150, something stupid like that. So we've saved money in that way. And the signing bonus is just 600k. Is he going to accept? Is this going to be the first signing of season three? Ooh, it's close. I can't do 81. That's just weird. 80. 80 grand per week, 700,000. Bang. Done. Welcome home, Emmy Martinez. I'm glad we've done that, actually. That is going to be a big signing for us. Of course, he will be going straight into the team. He's wearing the number 26 again, for sure. That's his number. And I'm really, I'm sorry that Ramsdale just hasn't worked. I think his potential is way higher than it should. No, it's too low in game. It, it should be way higher. Uh, he just doesn't grow as, as fast as you would like. So we've done the right thing there. Six ratings higher. He does improve my chances when conceding those stupid goals. Maybe um, Martinez will be able to reach and get those a little bit more often. But he's just a better goalkeeper overall if I compare them both. It's very obvious, isn't it? He's just better in every single way. He's taller. He's the right choice. It just kind of sucks that I've had to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the number 26. And then we'll move on to make one more signing. He's been given the number 16. Look at that. 26 is not available because Balogun. That's fine because I have plans to loan Balogun out again. I don't think I'm going to use him this season. So... I'm going to go ahead and change his number again just because I can. Number 16 will do. And then I'm going to go ahead and loan list him. Should we go through the entire squad? We might as well. A Conquo, I'm going to loan him again because I have, I've, no, I've got no need for three goalkeepers, let's be honest. I'm happy with all my centre-backs. I'm happy with my right-backs. I'm going to keep Chambers for a little bit longer. I'm going to keep all of these guys. I might loan out Aziz again. We'll see if we get any uh, any offers coming in for him. Uh, Erdegaard, Neves, Partey, Smithrow, Palmer. See, because he's 65 rated, and I might be using Patino a little bit more than I would be using Palmer, it's kind of ruined his chances a little bit by restarting, but that's okay. I'm going to add him to the loan list as well. We can try and get him up a little bit this season. I'm going to keep these guys, and that's good. That is absolutely fine. All the players have good contracts. They're all happy. None of them have red thumbs down on the contract. So I think we're good to just move on and look at some new players in midfield, I think. I was just thinking, though, guys, what if Enesiri gets injured? I'm relying on Nketiah, maybe Martinelli as a striker, and then it's Delap. Oh, I think maybe we should be looking at strikers. And I've just seen that Martinez, Lataro Martinez, is at Real Madrid. Of course, he went to Liverpool, didn't he? In my reloaded save, he's ended up at Real Madrid. So I'm going to go ahead and add him to the shortlist. I think this is going to have to go down to a vote, though. I don't just want to sign an incredible striker and everyone's like, no, that's ruined it for me. We'll have a look at Isaac as well. He's not a Tottenham, surely. Yes, I don't have to sign him from Tottenham now. OK, we'll add him as an option. I think the problem is he's very similar to Nasiri. There is Abraham. We could take a look at him. Tammy Abraham. There's so many Abrahams. Look at this. And there's Timmy Abraham. That's his little brother, isn't it? So Tammy Abraham is still at Roma. Do not know his rating. So we'll have to scout him. I've also added a different option, and that is Fekir. Fekir was linked with Arsenal many, 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 many years ago when we had Wenger. He was almost... Uh, I think he almost joined Liverpool, didn't he? And he failed a medical or something. And he's... 
just an absolute monster in this game. So we could potentially use him as a striker. He'd be kind of similar to Martinez, you know, that kind of build. Oh, he's got the finesse shot trait as well. Okay, we've got some good options here. I'm not going to make this signing now. I definitely want to get your guys' feedback. So we'll wait until we get the scout report back on Abraham and then we can go through them all. We've got our first offer and it is Norwich looking to take Aziz on a loan to buy deal. Interesting. I think I'm going to negotiate this one because I'd rather not sell him permanently. So I'm going to propose the loan without the buy option. Okay, they're happy with that. We'll go with the one-year loan. I think that's absolutely fine. And the wage split, I mean, come on. The, the minimum we, we start off with here is 50-50. I think that makes sense. There we go. Hopefully, Aziz will accept that deal. He's he's a good young player. I just don't know if I'm going to be using him, especially when I've got Yuga Chukwu and I've got um, Patino now as well. There we go. Confirmed. Aziz is loaned out. And the scout report is back already. So you're telling me I sent a scout all the way out to Rome he watched training a few games and came back all in a few days. <laughs> Doesn't really make sense, does it? I feel like it should take a little bit longer, but I guess it would be kind of tedious, wouldn't it? So let's go ahead and jump into the transfer hub again. He is 82 rated. Interesting. So I guess it's kind of similar to the Isaac thing I, I said, that, that they're pretty similar to um, in the series. You know, they're tall, stronger, I'm not quite sure if Abraham would be what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm a little bit more interested in Martinez and Fekir than Abraham. So, yeah, I'd, oh, I'd, I'll, I'll leave him here because I'd like you guys to vote. I think these are the four options I'm going to go with. These are four players that I would love to have at the club, regardless of who wins, if that makes sense. Just remember, it's kind of meant to be a backup striker. So I, I kind of feel like Martinez is a bit overkill. And I also feel like Isaac, I mean, he'd have to start. He'd have to start ahead of Enesiri. And I, I've really enjoyed Enesiri, so I don't really necessarily want to take him out of the team. But my God, he's, he's, he's massively, massively good, isn't he? Look at him. And he's massive. Six foot four. All right, I'll leave that down to you guys. It's very simple. Join the Discord. Uh, Discord.gg slash MGH. You can type that into Google Chrome. and It'll launch it. Or just go on to the Discord software, click on server search or whatever it is, the little plus icon, and just search for MGH United. And you can join, get in the club council chat, and I will put a vote in the vote section, and you can pick a player. You can pick multiple players. You can vote for two of them if you want. And what I'll do is I'll wait till, because obviously the next episode is going to be on Monday. So over the weekend, I can just see what happens with the vote. Uh, anyway... I think that is all I want to do today. I want to save the first games for the next episodes. So I guess we'll just keep going here and see if we get any offers coming in for the loan listed players. Was that Thiago? Who just joined Atletico Madrid there? I think it's disappeared. Where is it? I'm pretty sure it was Thiago, which would mean Liverpool have weakened as well. Oh my God. I think Bayern are interested in, in the series. Oh dear. Looks like we're going to get an offer coming in from Bayern, although I'm pretty sure I've got his offers on blocked, so he can't receive any offers. Uh, we've got a loan with an option to buy deal from Braga for Balogun. Again, I'm just going to delegate this one, but I, I don't want to sell him necessarily. We'll go with the one-year loan. Let's see if that goes through. And I believe it's Chelsea. First game of the season. It's a big one. And look at that. Balogun has agreed. Bang. Done. Two players loaned out. One player signed. And one more player to sign. Another striker. I guess that was always going to be the case. Another midfielder would be great. But to bring another striker, now that Lacazette and Aubameyang are both gone, it does make sense. I don't think Nketi is at the level yet where I can just rely on him as my backup. So I think we've done a good job there. Again, thank you so much, man. The support on the first episodes, the last episode, sorry, was just so good. And yeah, I know there's quite a few people that are upset that I had to do this, but it is what it is. I completely understand if you don't want to watch it anymore, that's fine. There'll be another career mode series after this one. It won't be too long, you know, a couple of weeks and this one will be finished. So uh, I, I can appreciate that it's frustrating, but like, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't end it there. Oh my God, Liverpool, what are they doing? Sula and Soler. 
Wow. Liverpool are going to be strong. They really are, even if they have sold Thiago. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support. I appreciate you. We'll be back on Monday with the beginning of season three, the actual beginning of the games. In fact, let me just quickly show you the calendar. Who do we have? Oh my God, it's Tottenham straight away after that. Two London derbies at the Emirates, and then we're away to Southampton. I will see you on Monday.